Joining us now on the DNM Leasing Hotline is the one and only Jane Slater. Jane, how are you? What a crazy day. I know it is crazy. I mean, sort of expected, right? Uh, if anything, I feel like Dan Quinn probably should have left last year because uh, I don't think that that Green Bay game did him, did him any favors, but I wish him all the success. And I know how well respected he was in that locker room and how much some of the guys liked him. And I've, I've made the argument that I don't know what other defensive coordinators in his rookie season would have listened to Micah Parsons saying, hey, let me rush the edge while also uh, playing linebacker because that's how he was drafted. A lot of times you're only seeing how you come in. And so credit to Dan Quinn for, you know, being open to letting his players prove themselves and to Micah's credit. I think he's done a good job showing some position flex there. So what are you hearing in terms of where the Cowboys go next to fill Dan Quinn's shoes? I think it's a little bit of a complicated uh, move here if you think about it. The fact that they didn't extend Mike McCarthy, uh, I think, makes it tricky to go out and make a big splash at defensive coordinator. I mean, who's going to come here when you don't know the future of this franchise past this season. Uh, so I, I, I think that that's going to be a consideration. I think most people that come to these jobs, they, you know, I was talking to another coach about this this morning, they ultimately want at least two, three years of security. Now, you know, an older coach, like say a Ron Rivera, or, you know, I've, I've seen the Mike Zimmer uh, thing tossed around. I haven't talked to them, right? I can't confirm any of that. Uh, they might be more apt to rolling the dice as one coach told me you know they're more confident in themselves they might be more interested in and coming in here and doing a one-year deal what i do know is you know this organization isn't a big fan of hiring people and and paying out contracts for guys to sit around and do nothing and so i, I think that's where we we find this situation and then i think the next thing is for coaches with one year left on their deal they don't have to ask permission to go to another team if they're getting a promotion. So how many coaches on this staff, offensive and defense, are going to look to move over to Dan Quinn, who is going to be putting together a staff of his own with kind of late in the game with not a lot of people out there. So I think that's going to be something to watch here in the next couple of weeks. Jane, uh, you mentioned about the, the Mike Zimmers and other uh... – I know for a fact that Mike, and I know you'll get the information too. I, I know Mike will absolutely do this. He would take this job here if offered. Well, I would trust you on that. Obviously, you yeah. have a, a good relationship yeah, with them. Yeah, I do. And I know, I, and he's going to tell you the exact same thing. I know uh, some, or some way you'll back channel, whatever you have to do. I know you'll get that done. But uh, yeah, I, I think to me, this is where, this is where, uh, to me, the, you know, the familiarity with Jerry and Steven. Now, the respect. I mean, let's see what Mike McCarthy, what is his, you know, is his, was his memories of battling against a guy like Mike Zimmer, uh, you know, at Minnesota Green Bay, was that something that he's like, man, this guy gave me fits? Or was there, you know, I know that I know that uh, Mike Zimmer was very complimentary of Mike when he got let go in Green Bay. He was like, hey, th this is a terrible day. This guy's a damn good coach, that kind of thing. So, you know, to me, that, that if it's not in-house, that just seems like a pretty good option to kind of keep things going. At least the Joneses has some fam familiarity there. Well, and honestly, Brian, I, I think for any coach, and this is not just uh, unique to Mike McCarthy, when you're heading into a final year without an extension, uh, you are sort of heading into a lame duck season, there would be paranoia for any coach to bring in a young DC or, you know, I've seen people absurdly say, well, what about Mike Vrabel or Bill Belichick? That would breed even more paranoia around here. Dan Quinn came in here after that one season with Mike Nolan and I thought he worked really, really well alongside Mike. I mean, those two were boxing in the off season. I think it allowed Mike to focus a little bit more on the offense than he was able to do when, you know, they were going through the COVID year and, and the challenges when Mike Nolan was here. And to be very clear, I'm not sitting here trashing Mike Nolan. That was a tough year uh, for a lot of people. But but he wasn't I good, Jane. It, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't I mean, good. He wasn't. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, your report in the, the locker the problem, room. Was, but yeah. the problem with all of that, Ryan, was they were trying to change the scheme yeah. in a COVID year right. over over Zoom calls. And so I thought it was right. a little too ambitious that year. And it, it and that was the only coach, I'm if I remember, that the Cowboys have actually said goodbye to after just one year. You know, normally right. Jerry will write, will write it out with these guys no matter what the fans say. And so I, I think what you've got here is you've got a unique situation of having to bring in someone here that 
has familiarity with the league, but also is going to be able to work alongside Mike McCarthy and not threaten what Mike is trying to do here in Dallas. I mean, Mike wants an extension, right? So he wants this, you know, to be a good year, not only for himself, but for, you know, Dak Prescott. But I also think there's a lot of, a lot of things going on, on the defensive side of the ball again. And, you know, some of the things that I've heard is that there's been a real lack of defensive leadership in there. Sure. I think having Dan Quinn as the defensive coordinator helped with some of that. Uh, but when you get a guy from the outside, how is he going to handle and start building up the leadership on that side of the ball that has been lacking uh, in some of my conversations with players? Well, Jane, if you're saying things about this team and the locker room and all that, you're absolutely the best at this with this football team. And everything you said about Mike Nolan and all that, you took a lot of crap at. I'll tell you what, you did a hell of a job. You were absolutely right with all that. And that's why we should always listen to you. I, if you're If you're – if you're Mike McCarthy, though, do you do you have any grounds to go in there knowing that you're a lame duck and try and say, "Listen, if you guys are going to make me this way, I'm going to give me some give me some help here. Give me this. Give me that. Give me you know." Do you start making demands if you're Mike McCarthy, knowing that uh, this could be your last campaign? You know, I it's you would think, uh, but you know, I guess you could also argue that last year, you know, Jerry and company gave him the play calling duties and. You know, we've seen in years past they've sort of made concessions uh, with Mike McCarthy. It, it does very much feel like this is a proven year for Mike. And, you know, even internally, listen, you know, talking to some people in there without getting into who I've talked to, it's, you know, all of them are talking about the fact, you know, here goes another year where all season long people are going to be comparing Mike McCarthy to what's out there. The fact that Bill Belichick wasn't hired this cycle, the fact that Mike Vrabel wasn't hired this cycle. So it's not the it's not a great place to be, and I certainly wouldn't want it if I had one year left with NFL Network and I kept thinking about you know somebody coming in here to replace me. Contract years are tough. I'm in one yeah. myself, uh, and so I do feel for you know Mike McCarthy. And to use Jerry Jones's uh, phrase, you know, smallest violin in the room. He's still a head coach in the football league, coaching yeah. for the Dallas Cowboys. But I, I do think that it, it makes a lot of this. There's layers to this, and I think it 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 makes it you know tricky for them and. Again, they're looking for a defensive coordinator fairly late in the game. I mean, right. you've got all these coaches that have been hired, and they're already pulling a lot of guys that are that you don't have to ask permission for that are you know they're promoting and they're not lateral moves. And so I, I think that's the real challenge here. And then I think everyone just assumes that Joe Witt or Al Harris are going to stay here. Right. He's not to say Dan doesn't bring them right. with him and right. give them you know a better title. Yeah. Jane, last one. Uh, I know you're super busy. I appreciate you giving us some time, but what did you make of Jerry's all-in comments at the Senior Bowl? I guess I, you know, he said that should answer a lot of questions. My only takeaway from that was I still have a lot more questions. I mean, how are you going to go all-in when you've got a coach heading into one year on a deal? You just lost Dan Quinn that, you know, people can say what they want to say about that Green Bay game, but remember at the beginning of the year when the offense wasn't doing their part, it was this defense that was bailing them out. And it's crazy that people keep forgetting that. And I'm not sitting here working as a PR tool for Dan Quinn. I'm just saying there's been some revisionist history as we talk about this last season. And so those are the challenges. And you've also got, what, 16 free agents you've got to figure out. And then you've also got guys that are coming up and want to negotiate their contracts. You've got to figure out what you're going to do with Dak Prescott still because we've talked about him having a no franchise, no trade. And they're on the hook for 59.5 if they don't extend them. And so I think it's – I'll be interested to see what all-in looked like as a result of that. Does all-in mean going out and getting a guy like Derrick Henry? No. Okay. Uh, does all-in mean that you're going to let Dak ride? Well, okay. But then what are you going to – what pieces are you going to put around him? Are you talking about maybe trading a player and, and making a Herschel Walker type, you know, boon? You know, when you did that with Herschel Walker, look how it did for – years moving forward, but I don't know what the impact you would have this year. And so uh, that's my question is, you know, how are things, how, what does all in mean? Yeah, I think we all had a lot more questions uh, than, than answers for that comment as well. Jane, you're the best. We look forward to the Shrine Bowl tonight and all the coverage there, and hopefully we'll catch up with you soon. Well, and as I would say, what I like about this East-West Shrine Bowl is they're Mitch, they've allowed coaches from across the league they're mixed through all the rosters yeah. so you've got like yeah. somebody from the bears you've got somebody right. from the broncos you've got i think this is more than just a showcase for some of the players this is a showcase for your next crop of stars 
uh, moving up in the coaching ranks. And so that's what I love about this. And if you're a fan of the game and you want to say, oh, you know, this is the next guy, this would be a good game to watch just for that. We're pumped for it. Thank you so much, Jane. Take care. Appreciate it, guys. Bye-bye.